Okay, hello everyone. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm uh, Kasalin Taramu from Romania. I used to be a professional uh, player in Japan. I uh, activated there for like nine years. And uh, since 2004, I returned to Europe in order to promote Go. And here in London, I think I'm it's the fourth time probably that I am attending this event, so most of the people know me. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> for uh, for tonight's lecture, um, the topic will be the teachings of uh, AI. You know, I'm a, I'm a professional player that uh, learned Go when uh, AI was not existing, you know, so uh, nowadays uh, probably the young young players cannot imagine Go without AI, without consulting with AI. And also what I want to tell you is like the, like the older theories, uh, especially older Joseki, most of them are like uh, completely destroyed by the AI. Uh, they are not played nowadays. So like the kind of Go that I learned 20 years ago is completely changed. And um, uh, the story with AI uh, for me started recently. Like uh, I refused for a long time to uh, to change my uh, my way of teaching. Uh, I think AI is a very good tool for uh, consulting, for uh, getting ideas, but um, it's also good to, to keep your uh, your human mind, you know, like to uh, to try to develop understanding of the game of Go and use AI like uh, really like a tool and not like uh, the absolute teacher that always tells you the absolute truth, you know. So I started to uh, study with Katago, with Katago and um, comment uh, games with Katago. And I would like to share uh, with you my uh, insights, um, some of the really nice uh, ideas that I discovered with the, the computer. And uh, also uh, to make a parallel of some, some of the josekis that we used to take for granted, for example, like Nadari, How many? Uh, in Japanese is Avalanche, it was a very famous joseki, but nowadays you, you will not see it played uh, very often, and there is a good reason why. Anyway, let's uh, start. So first, uh, first uh, shape that I would like to show you, it's uh, some really <coughs> interesting move I saw from the AI in a position that was something like this. So locally, uh, the rest of the board uh, I will not uh, play, just uh, locally here. Uh, block to play. And uh, while it was not the blue move, uh, one of the suggestions of, uh, of Katago was to play here. And you know, this kind of move, for uh, like most players find it quite strange. I mean, if you play Keima, this kind of Keima would be natural for maybe most players, you know, protecting the corner, uh, not allowing white to enter uh, in this corner here, or this kind of Keima, cupping the, the white stone and uh, developing uh, the like border between the black and the white moyo. So those, those kind of Keimas look natural. This Keima looks a bit strange. So what, what do you think is the, the purpose of this move? I mean, why the AI would like to play such a move? This game uh, doesn't look strange to you? With, uh, on the middle, uh, make a castle. With, uh, to make a castle. Uh, yeah. yeah, but you can also do it like this. I mean, you, you have uh, other ways. You know, I, I think I understand why um, Katago was proposing this move. It's, uh, it's really interesting. So first of all, you know, when uh, this, this shape, this is kind ah. of a modern go shape, uh, ah, ah, after white it. hits the vital point here, there is a very tough continuation. You probably, most of you know it, right? Uh, if black does nothing, uh, white is looking forward to like... 4-4. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. this, uh, this move, okay? So uh, this is... Uh, this is something to be expected here, and uh, it goes like this, and it's quite severe. Okay, so one thing that uh, you should know about AI, I mean, uh, the biggest revelation uh, I had when I, uh, I studied with, uh, the AI, but this came already from uh, AlphaGo from the, the very beginning, is that in the Fuseki, we human beings used to play too slow. So the, the computer is really playing very, very fast Fuseki, and uh, the top priority is always go to the next large point as soon as you can. I mean, sometimes you have to come back and defend some uh, urgent point, as we, we call it, 
but uh, go to the next large point as soon as you can. So, uh, if this kind of variation would not be severe, then uh, usually the AI would like to switch to the next large point. It's pity I don't I don't really recall the rest of the board, but that's the core of uh, of this discussion. <coughs> the reason why AI would propose uh, such a move is because this move is indirectly defending against this uh, this target. So uh, how how does this uh, defend against uh, against uh, White's uh, aim? Let's look a little bit at that, and it will become very clear in a few moves. We repeat the same sequence, and here uh, this knob is absolute. And usually in this uh, this kind of Joseki, the cutting point here and the, the capture uh, by playing in the nose of those two stones, uh, those are Mi. So when white uh, solidly connects here, now because we have this move here, we can actually immediately capture the two, two cutting stones there. And this is also making a pretty good shape when uh, white turns here, uh, black can uh, answer with uh, with a nice shape. So somehow when you when you see the continuation and when you think about this continuation, the position of this stone is just uh, perfect to uh, achieve the goal that uh, uh, we had. So and this is, uh, I think, how we should study with AI. We should try to understand the message of his um, his proposal, the move that uh, the AI proposed. This really intrigued me, and it was one of the, the good moves to play because Black really needs to do something about this threat. Otherwise, Black would like as much as possible to switch to the next large point. So for me, I wanted to share with you this uh, uh, small revelation, this insight, because. You don't see such a move every day, you know, like in the in the dictionary of the usual Go player, this is a relatively exotic move. And this is a lot better than this kind of move. This kind of move is on the second line and it's a submissive, it's a answering uh, opponent's move, like uh, this becomes a Kikashi. Uh, so only this exchange and already white takes a large advantage in the game. But uh, if we play on uh, towards the center, <coughs> the center is very, very important large area and this is completely different. That's why this kind of move uh, really makes uh, a lot of sense. This is starting with the uh, Haikakari. To which naturally black uh, goes for uh, for taking territory. So the weakness of uh, a stone on the fourth line is that it can give the opponent quick territory. And this is a natural natural move to continue. <coughs> and here, you know, I wonder for a long time how this uh, can become a joseki because, for example, if you play uh, this kind of shape in the center, uh, when uh, the opponent attaches uh, your stone, you have two good answers and two bad answers. You know, normally you have four answers. When uh, two stones are in contact, you have four answers, like one, two, three, four. So now when black came in touch with uh, white, uh, white can play defensively like this, or aggressively like this or like this. I mean, we, we are talking now fundamentals of the game of Go. I mean, in some particular situations, a bad move can always be a, the, the fit move for the, the certain position. But if we talk in general, uh, like uh, this kind of reply or this kind of reply, th those are not good. Why? Because uh, this kind of move is quite unreasonable, because uh, white is behind always in this kind of fight uh, with one move. And uh, this kind of move is also uh, not, uh, not good, because uh, white is hitting the head of the, of the group into a black stone that is already there, you know? So the natural reaction to such a move would be to always play like this or like this, to keep away from the, the black stone here and not... Uh, not fall in this kind of trap, you know? So, the Nadare Joseki starts with already like this kind of move that has a unnatural feeling, a little bit bad feeling, you know? So I was always wondering uh, <coughs> how can uh, we, we get like uh, equal shape even if uh, white comes second and also plays this kind of uh, unnatural move. And here, you know, <coughs> we have this shape uh, that is called the small nadare, and this this kind of nobi that was the big nadare, the large nadare, if you some of you remember or study the older Josekis. And here, <coughs> it's very interesting to study with Katago to see uh, what is Katago's opinion of the old Joseki. So, for example, nadare continues like this. Okay, so up to here, it's uh, white try to make me eye of this and this. And now when black play here, uh, black is aiming at capturing uh, 
in a ladder, so White's response here is breaking the ladder. And you know, the, the old Josek was a black playing this kind of move. And this is losing a lot. I mean, in the opinion of the computer, this is a very bad move, and this is not a Joseki, this is uh, uh, clearly in uh, White's advantage. Uh, because uh, White started with this kind of uh, move from the very beginning, uh, Katago says that, uh, you know, uh, Black has an advantage. Not a large advantage, but something like half a point towards one point. If Black continues with uh, this, this is uh, the, the old dictionary shape of the Nadare Joseki, and it, it goes like this. Well, this black lost a lot. So initially, uh, black had advantage in this fight, but now white is better. White is like one point or one point and a half better, something like that, which is quite a lot, uh, a lot of difference. So between black being ahead one point and a half and white getting ahead one point and a half, this means that something pretty bad happened for black. Okay, so what uh, even the, the grandmasters of the past believe that this is an um, uh, equal shape is actually not. So uh, this is uh, where the computer is very useful for uh, for us to study uh, older shapes and to, to realize where uh, we had uh, some uh, wrong thinking. <coughs> In this fight, so up to this moment, the black is leading because white started with this move. So now uh, Black just uh, has to uh, find a way uh, to answer this move. And here, uh, does anyone know the, the fighting variation of the, the small Nadare? Is it the 7 5? You can the try to, to play it out if you want. Yeah, yeah, well. Is it the attachment here? Uh, well, that is one way to, to do it. And how do you continue? Uh, would you would you ask it here, and then possibly uh, possibly even come out? I'm not sure. No, if you if you try to come out now, I mean uh, White is looking forward to to cut here. Yeah, if true. White manages to cut here and yeah. connect all his groups, the game is finished. I mean, this is disaster. Do you have to just defend your cut then? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so here, uh, Black has to find a way to uh, to defend this starting point, but uh, if we defend normally like this, then uh, White will just uh, block and win the semi eye and this is terrible for Black, you know. Uh, Black cannot play here because White will cut, so uh, we are in some kind of mi eye situation, and the only solution that Black has here is uh, locally to, to prevent this cut, but also to capture the corner is to play here. This move is very important, you know. And uh, sometimes you, you can try to play this one, but usually it's, it's good to not play any move that is not necessary. So black only has to play moves that are necessary. So actually, you know, for those of you that uh, still believed until tonight that, uh, you know, the, the other variation was like a Joseki. Maybe it's a good time to, to review the old knowledge. Uh, here, uh, uh, black is threatening to, to capture white and the correct uh, answer is to make shape like this. And finally, black has to come back and play in the corner. I mean, if you watch, if you study professional games, uh, you, you can meet sometimes this, uh, this Joseki played by uh, very top players. Uh, but this is, uh, in fact, let's say the most common and uh, the good way for Black to play the official shape of Nadare Joseki. Okay, it's uh, it's quite important important to have this knowledge because this shape can appear very very easy in a, in a game. So I think this is also a good um, a good revelation uh, that we we can get from the AI. Uh, now I would like to go to the third uh, set of shape, which is one of the, the most interesting discussions, but also very, very difficult shape. It's, um, it's the kind of Joseki that starts with, uh, uh, with this kind of low Hasami. You know, in the past, uh, the theory was that this is not a good move. This in uh, Japanese Go, when I learned as, a, uh, like, uh, as an Insei, when I learned Go in Japan, I was told that this is not a good move, and the reason is after a black cut, you 
there is a gap between these two stones and because of that this move is not good and because of that the high move uh, basically this, uh, this way of uh, this Hasami it's a good move. This was the theory at the time but it, it proves to be uh, inaccurate in the sense that we didn't go deep enough to, to see if this is a good move or not. In fact, uh, <coughs> so far, uh, as far as this, the computer agrees. But the computer also says that uh, this is uh, uh, this is so far a very balanced uh, fight. Uh, black is uh, uh, slightly ahead, but because uh, black uh, comes with the, the first move and is attacking white. Uh, but the condition uh, you will see from um, I study many variations here. The condition is that we should never allow the opponent to come in between the stones. Right now, white cannot play here, because black will immediately cut. So it's uh, very interesting to, to study variations uh, coming from here. And by the way, um, it was said also that this kind of variation, like, uh, like capturing here, some professionals told me at, at, uh, at that time that uh, this is good for white. This is not good for white. And the computer confirms it. I had a feeling always that this shape cannot be good for white because this uh, this move, I mean, the ponuki with four stones is amazing, but um, a ponuki with five stones is not so amazing because this is a wasted stone and this stone should normally be here. If it would be like this, white would be good. But because it's like this, uh, black is okay. So white has no choice but to go down and fight. And from here, uh, very interesting things happen. And first of all, I will tell you the simple theory, uh, also some things that I teach to, to many students. Okay, how to deal with this? Oh, it's very easy. You just play this. Uh, black will have to play here, and uh, when you retreat, black will have to play here. And then you play here, and this is bad for black. And this was my teaching, and also most uh, professionals uh, in Japan would teach you like this. this is, that's why this is bad for black. But of course, Katago doesn't agree. And it doesn't agree when you reach this kind of point. This is so good for, uh, for white that black has to, to not let it happen. So for example, in this kind of position, black has to play here. And actually, the entire position here is still uh, evaluated a little bit better for black. You know, which is surprising. But uh, now I would like to, to show you the, the main variation of this fight. And I think this is important. First of all, let me show you that you can get this uh, from another uh, position. So you can get this shape from, uh, from the third line uh, Kakari, when a black attack like this. But you can get exactly the same shape from this one. If black decides to play here, which recently I saw in some games, then the, uh, the correct uh, answer for white is to, because black didn't uh, answer on the, top, on the top side, the correct answer for white is to block the top side. You know, so this kind of came up. <coughs> and from here, uh, also playing something like that would be strange now. So black's uh, correct answer is to play here. And we get precisely the same shape like before, but uh, with a different starting point. Okay? So from here, the variation that, uh, there are many, many, many variations, I will just show you uh, a few. Uh, there is a big debate, I think, in, uh, in Katagos, uh, if you ask sometimes, you know, also one reason why you should not believe that uh, AI is the absolute, uh, uh, says the absolute truth, is that sometimes AI tells you something and then he corrects himself, tells you something different. So it's also like uh, just uh, showing the result of some, uh, some search that we don't really understand how it works. But uh, it's changing its mind quite often. So you know, uh, this move or this move would be possible, uh, uh, some of those two. But I think this is, uh, from what I, I, I could gather, this is the main variation. Uh, Black's answer uh, has to be here. Black needs to fight some, uh, some space for his two stones. And now white is directly going for this, which looks unreasonable, no? I mean, black will cut. But one thing that I really like about Kata Go is that he goes for the natural move and he reads until it makes it happen. And this is exactly what my teacher told me a long time ago. If you want to play a move, just play it and read, read until you make it happen. Read until you 
you find a good variation because if you feel that it's the right move then uh, it should work somehow so here um, uh, white enters this uh, seemingly quite uh, dangerous variation of, of course black will cut and the continuation also pretty natural uh, white is threatening with uh, with this geta so black has to react and uh, white comes with this how many of you saw this shape at least once in their life you know <clears throat> this is where uh, I would really advise you to uh, train if for uh, people who want to improve their, um, their playing skill, to train with uh, the AI in this kind of situation. Try to analyze a little bit deeper the variations that the AI tell you, uh, shows you, because uh, if you arrive to such a position in a, in a real game, and it's very likely that this will happen because the, the shape is quite common, then it's good to, to know such uh, variations in advance, otherwise you will have to, to spend a lot of time during the game, which is usually not productive. Black seems to be in danger, but... Uh, yeah, black continues this fight, uh, threatening to play here. Uh, white cannot uh, play here because of this. So white has to block. And the fight continues like that. Sorry. Why does black exchange a triangle? Why doesn't he just Hanno? Why does it, uh, why he, he just hunt it? Yeah, why did he just hunt it, yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. I think he, he wants white, uh, <coughs> it's, a, it's a deeper calculation, but uh, I think he wants white to, to have this shape in order to create this weakness here, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, this weakness is there anyway, but uh, it's a good question that you ask. Um, white uh, should explore also the possibility to double honey here. You know, if you, if you play this too late, uh, maybe this double uh, double panel can come. Uh, first of all, this looks dangerous, but also white can play here. Double honey doesn't seem to work. Yeah, yeah good question. Why? <laughs> uh, white could also play directly. Anyway, uh, the continuation goes like this. Uh, I think uh, you know, for black to to play this kind of move, it's it's never uh, feasible because this gives white uh, proper shape on the other side, you know. So my feeling is that this is, well, I, I probably have to research more, but this is uh, especially to force white to play this kind of move because this feels like a little bit like bad shape. You huh. know? Anyway, it's, uh, it's quite similar. Buck has to, to run away. And uh, running away like this on the second line looks quite hopeless, in fact. So normally I would, I would not uh, find this kind of variation. If uh, if I see it the first time in a real game, I would I would I cannot think about such such things, you know. But the computer is not giving up, and uh, <laughs> it continues this fight. <laughs> White uh, finally can Atari, and uh, there is interesting also why uh, we don't Atari directly because in some situations maybe we can use also this, you know. So we only Atari when we. We only play this kind of move when there is no no other way to use the, the local uh, Aji, you know. So here, it feels pretty safe to Atari now. Anyway, the, sometimes the difference in the order of moves doesn't really matter. And uh, here, uh, White continues to play like this. If uh, White uh, continues playing like that, uh, then we will uh, start to have problems uh, on the top. So at some point, I think here first, uh, okay, no, we, we play like this and the uh, black uh, escapes and now white has to take care of uh, this shape. And how would you play in this area if you were white? Two, three. Yeah, the thing is after, after you play this exchange, uh, there, is, there is still a problem here. So you have to come back to, to still defend. So you see, that's why, I mean, this, uh, this threat here, it's, uh, it's quite big quite painful for white. And again, uh, the next move is, uh, is quite impressive. Uh, I think very few, even like uh, high-level professional players would find this move uh, playing here. <laughs> uh, somehow uh, the computer uh, shows this, uh, this kind of variation. And uh, playing one more time here. And then finally, uh, white is testing a little bit, uh, fishing for some uh, answers from the opponent, you know, this what we call Yozumiru, asking the opponent, uh, like, uh, how will you answer? The computer uses this a lot. And uh, 
this is uh, the order of moves is uh, it's likely very very subtle. But uh, after uh, playing those moves, now this thread here uh, disappears because white uh, managed to, to get this shape and black cannot play like this. He will, he will put himself into a very big uh, lack of liberties. And now after playing this, uh, white restarts a little bit the attack here. I mean... This kind of variation, really uh, applying a lot of pressure on black. And we feel like uh, half of the board with uh, stones, uh, starting from uh, this variation. <coughs> I showed you where the, most of the professional players stop thinking, okay, this is bad for, uh, for black, but uh, the AI yeah, didn't give up and uh, reading all this. And in the end we have to, to analyze the, the final result. Uh, after this, white uh, tests a little bit this move, anyway, those uh, four stones are captured. And finally, white uh, plays here as well. And white, basically, with those exchanges here, managed to live in Sente in a, in a pretty, pretty cool way. And finally, after this, uh, we can play one more time uh, this kind of move. This is the last uh, Hikashi that we can play against the black group. So you see, normally, to, to go like this on the second line so many times, it's pretty crazy. But black has a pretty large compensation here. And after that, basically, we return to playing large, large uh, points. And this is only one of the many, 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 many variations that uh, uh, can uh, can start from uh, uh, from this joystick. I told you. Uh, I do remember at some point there was uh, this professional player from Russia, Alexander Dinerstein. Probably most of you heard about him. He always wanted to research like uh, new moves and uh, especially tricks. Uh, I do remember uh, <coughs> it was very challenging to find uh, an answer for uh, also in this variation for a very aggressive way of playing instead of uh, nobi out here just uh, pushing out here and play very very direct directly aggressive against white so to this uh, white can play one time this kind of hikashi but now uh, white has to come back and defend so black plays like this and then uh, plays extremely severe moves, <coughs> completely closing white inside. Okay, this is a very powerful way of playing with black, but uh, if you ask the AI now in this position, white is gaining like one point and a half or something, which means black is overreacting a little bit. And how to punish this? I mean, how to react with white against uh, such an aggressive play? Turn at the top of the three stone. Yeah, but before turning, we should Atari, I think, to create oh, some, uh, yeah, some magic. First, yeah. Yeah. Indeed, turning. And now, one more here. Yeah. Yeah. If you play this with this, it's, uh, it's helping the black shape a lot. In some situations, we would really like to play like this. <coughs> so if black plays himself there, then white doesn't need to play here anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. so, uh, usually you leave it in such a position because uh, such an exchange is uh, actually helping the black not white. Local position, surprisingly estimated better for white and uh, the continuation would be just to play a large point. But uh, the, the situation in the corner is not finished. Actually, if we study a little bit deeper, because uh, the computer leaves it like that because it, it reads very deeply ahead. Normally here white uh, can start to make trouble with this kind of moves. And against this move, uh, we can start a call. But if we do it right now, we don't have cotrets. And playing, uh, we can gain two cotrets by playing like this from inside. But this is such a bad loss of uh, points and thickness, that if you play such cotrets, even if you win the call, it's still bad. So the reason is that uh, at some point, pretty soon, uh, black will have to uh, come back and play another move there. So basically, how is the estimation uh, that this is better for white? Is because black has to play one more, and then white can get another large point. So if you look at the final position like this, okay, black gets a very respectable territory here, and some thickness towards this side, but at the same time, white gets about the same on this side. Very nice thickness. 
but uh, more, more importantly, white got lung extra moves. For me, this was also enlightening because uh, I had doubts. I mean, uh, I had a feeling that this is the way we should uh, fight here. But for example, I would play the core right away and uh, start some crazy variations here. If you start to play uh, this directly, <coughs> suddenly white's uh, asset advantage will disappear. Uh, why? Because uh, if we if we play, uh, this would be like one way street. Uh, considering that we are just in Fuseki, we don't have code rates. If we started the call here, then uh, we should. The only reasonable way to make code rates would be like this. But this is losing so much that uh, already uh, White has, uh, <coughs> has uh, lost some of uh, its advantage. And Black uh, also has to react here. Uh, Black should probably. Uh, Black has a local code rate here. And can take once more, and White can use his final quartet here. And after that, Black just needs to take care about this group. So, for example, this kind of move, uh, White doesn't have any quartets left, so White has to take, which means Black can play here. Uh, white is not yet alive here, so before uh, before deciding to make the second eye, we should Atari onto this. Uh, black can uh, answer like this. Uh, not connecting, just uh, go out. <coughs> so this is another one of the complicated variations. In the end, if white decides to go for this, uh, white can leave, but is losing advantage. Quite a few points, and uh, now black uh, black has a, has a better result. So another uh, interesting uh, variation, uh, also in this uh, shape. Uh, it's uh, really important, in my opinion, to study this shape, because it can appear uh, so, so so easily in uh, real games. So now another uh, interesting move to study, it's this. This is not as good as the Keima, but uh, Kosumi is also one of the variations that uh, uh, you can consider. So this again, uh, what is the meaning of this Kosumi? White is looking directly to, uh, to play here. And also, Black's reaction against this has to be to not allow white to, to come here, so uh, the shape move, it's like this. Also taking the vital point of uh, white shape. If white plays in the corner, uh, Black can continue with uh, uh, this kind of move. And uh, we will get some uh, pretty complicated semi in the corner. But again, uh, white is looking uh, to immediately, very soon, to play this kind of uh, move and start uh, using the, the RG on the outside. Uh, here we have to come back to, to make shape like this. So, for example, this one can also be uh, a possible continuation in this shape. As you notice, all the variations require uh, very careful reading. That's why I think it's good to do this uh, homework at uh, home and not during a tournament game. <laughs> and uh, generally, what is the idea? Also, there is a very interesting variation here. Uh, when uh, white plays here, uh, variation starting with uh, with this kind of move, no? <coughs> and um, this is also uh, <coughs> usually ending in a slightly better result for black. So the idea is that sometimes even if you lose the corner, if the the opponent has to take with uh, semi eye and with a lot of portraits and everything, all the headache that comes with it. Then uh, Black's outside influence is superior to uh, to capturing uh, such a corner, uh, troublesome corner. And here uh, there were also a lot of uh, really nice variations. For example, if you if you rush to to capture the stone in the corner, then Black's approach would be to come from the outside and really force you to capture the four, the four stones there, but uh, get a very nice influence on the outside. You know, so from this point of view. White's uh, correct answer would be to block from the outside. So clearly we are uh, reaching a, a local fight here. Uh, now we, we have two possibilities. Black can play this kind of move or this kind of move. I think this was uh, one of <coughs> the variations that uh, I saw. Also <coughs> here immediately striking the vital point like this. 
So again, uh, very, very interesting uh, shapes to, uh, to analyze. But finally, the message about all this complicated shape is that, you know, um, in the past we saw a shape and we, we prefer to approach it very simply. Okay, it will be like this, tak pak, and then uh, um, it's, it's bad for, uh, bad for, uh, for black because uh, the gap between the stones. But uh, that's the point. Our approach was, was not deep enough and uh, we should never stop going deeper um, into, into variations and we should not be so uh, easily, how to, how to say, uh, dominated by, uh, by shapes. So for example, when after we play this exchange, the immediate instinct is to defend this, this stone. But this shows that uh, the human, human mentality is uh, sometimes, you know, complacent in the sense that we arrive to the conclusion that this is bad, but at the same time, we don't search for a better variation. Uh, this is very uh, similar to the, the story that uh, I think this is the, the most disastrous uh, misinterpretation uh, of uh, Joseki in the entire uh, history of, uh, of Go, of let's say human Go, before the AI arrived. Uh, this uh, estimation of this Joseki, it's, uh, it's very funny how, how even like basically all the top professionals in the world arrived to the conclusion that this is the uh, most common uh, San San Joseki and uh, most of us were told like uh, absolute truth that uh, this, this Joseki is like this, you know? But then the advice was uh, black is too strong and you should not play San San too early in the game. As you know very well, nowadays we play San San very early in the game. Basically San San is, is a San San uh, festival in the most games, you know. But at the time, you shouldn't play Sansan too early. Why? Because uh, we get this Joseki and black is too good. But something was strange in all this uh, logic. And why was black too good? Uh, because uh, white felt that in this position we, we shouldn't take Nuki. Uh, but uh, to push from behind here on the second line is a very painful move. So rather than do that, uh, play like this to, to get a respectable corner, but in fact by playing this uh, exchange that is very much criticized by the AI, by playing this exchange we make black so strong that uh, the shape uh, becomes unbalanced and this is not really Joseki, black is much better. You know, so the mistake that was, uh, was made was because we refused to play this move, we chose to play this move. But this is even worse than the other, uh, the other move. But we accept that this move is the, the good Joseki, and then we say we should never play this shape because it's good for black, you know? And this was the theory for many years. I mean, I learned Go and I believe that. When I was told in, uh, in Japan I was in, say, I was told this and I believe it. But actually I was told back home in Europe because everybody in Europe uh, would teach probably to beginners. This was the, the first Joseki that every beginner learned, the San San Joseki. Okay, so uh, we are lucky now that we have uh, AI, which is a really precious tool that can help us a lot. I wanted to show you some of my uh, recent uh, insights with it, and... Uh, okay. <laughs>